more general, I'm interested in that. Um, I'm interested in, in how we seek to engage or involve um, union reps in this work, because they've not been mentioned at all in your report, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, for example, they have much input in the attendance management policy, but being constructed. I thought consultation with them would be quite interesting. Um, similarly, there's sort of a wealth of knowledge there and sort of very goodwill relations between them and their members. Are we utilising that to the benefit of, uh, of our end as well? If so, how? Thank you. Um, yes, I, I, I can see the reflection around the trade unions, particularly around the policy. When we put together the policy, um, because we put it together back in, in, in November 11, there was an absolute extensive um, consultation and discussion with the trade unions. Um, one of the things that we did to um, improve our approach to wellbeing is to put into the process and discussion with the trade unions the first stage, which was actually um, when we had concerns about the employee absence of their wellbeing that we have a review of their health and well-being before we moved into any formal process. Again, we did, did that in discussion with the trade unions with the policy is there to support them to either stay in work or to get back to work, not to confuse them. Um, so yes, that was in, in a lot of discussion with the trade unions, we've had great discussions with the trade unions around the OH contract and the level of support it, it, it has. We also obviously talked to, to the trade unions particularly about specific employees and particular issues. So there's a degree of ongoing dialogue. Positive involvement. Um, there is positive involvement. I mean, clearly they they will always be concerned if we're moving into a formal process because that's not what they would necessarily want for their members. Um, but actually, where we have reviewed the health and well-being and actually said that there are only 22 cases that we need to move into a formal process, it's something that we have to do in terms of policy training, but also to ensure that we are managing an attendance in a way that. Um, it's reasonably robust, along with what's supported. Um, uh, just with reference to Appendix um, 3 and 4 of the report, the report of the file, it seems to be called the bottom axis, it is completely missing, so there's no uh, indication of who it is there against. I'd like to go back into the detail of the report to find out where we're all placed, and we're all on both the pages. Thank you. 
shows not to take it to the army to see whether it's a you know, Monday morning issue or quite impressive or not. Um, I, I'm just looking at the, the data as to whether uh, that data there relates to um, an individual who's been on for a very long time and therefore has given, has actually meant that that excused what could be a trend to be a one off. Uh, and I'm looking at the spells to be able to show that. Um, I think I probably need to, to do some further examination of that point of further. So I think it's a good point about that. I think that's the power of this particular tool now. So I think mean, you couldn't do that before. Um, but Thank you. 
building as well, which is certainly supported it. But the information we've got does help us to drill down. The, the stats that we have by way of comparison with Appendix 3 and Appendix 4 is a reported absence. There's different methods of reporting <coughs> absence and um, part of the councils. However, the conventions of what we actually report through on the data is agreed before the data is sent, sent in. Um, and what I mean by different conventions of reporting absence is the method in which if somebody's absence in the workplace it actually reaches the data. We have been very meticulous in making sure that we reflect that to the data itself so that we'll certainly help that. That's not wanting to get away from the fact that the force is that you have to the time to be good.
quite unusual. And we had to start by Galetta, as it was completed at the time, that must have made any difference because the spike would have still had the effect it did. But now, with no spike effect, if the power goes off for more than about 20 minutes, right now we've got the same problem, we've got no power to any devices. Therefore, IT recommended that we should get a standby power generator that we manage on behalf of the authority to make sure all the IT equipment stays up and power is lost. I think since it took place in, in November, um, in September, you'll all have heard of the um, national news talking about withdrawal of power because of lack of capacity in the country, which is something quite outside our ability to control and other reasons as well that no matter. So that is still being considered uh, within the authority. Um, so those are the four conclusions that we came to after we had the problem. <coughs>